Time to look at uh, stories making headlines in Nigerian newspapers. And with me in the studio is journalist uh, Dario Dufawokon. Dario, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Great. And uh, on Skype, we have uh, public affairs analyst Razak Olokoba. Razak, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Nice to see Dario, you. Good morning. Great. Good morning. Great. All right, let's begin right now with uh, Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspapers. Outrage as marketers increase fuel price to 150 naira per litre. And hike will worsen inflation. Experts are saying this. Small businesses, businesses at receiving end. That's the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria is saying this. And federal government keeps silent over all of this. Okay, that's uh, Daily Trust. A blueprint newspaper is next now. Katsina. Masari owns up, says bandits operate in nine of 34 local government areas of the state. We are confronted with unfriendly terrain. Matawali tasks monarchs on intelligence. That's the blueprint and it's coming. Uh, the issues are from Katsina State. News Direct is the next newspaper now. $78.9 billion debt stock. China, not a major funding source for Nigeria. That's the DMO, uh, De De Debt Management Office, is saying this. It says loans from China represent 3.94%. Okay. From there, let's go to the Daily Times. <coughs> Daily Times is next now. And police revolution now protesters lock horns. Okay, uh, certainly brought you reports of the updates yesterday from Abuja and from around Lagos. A police revolution now, protesters lock horns. That's Daily Times. National newspaper is next now. National newspaper says business is optimistic as Nigeria records highest power generation ever. Okay, and task government discos on improved distribution. Right. Uh, it is reported that uh, about 5,000 uh, megawatts has been generated as it is. Okay, from there, let's go to Leadership Newspaper, which is the last one we're looking at now, COVID-19. Al-Qaeda infiltrating Northwest. U.S. alerts Nigeria. U.S. alerts Nigeria. Al-Qaeda is infiltrating Nigeria from the northwestern part of the country and says they're sharing information with uh, Nigeria and working with Nigeria on what to do and how to go about things. It says terror group taking advantage of pandemic. Yeah, well, it has uh, multiple riders there uh, fall off from the story. Okay. Uh, there's something else I'd like us to talk about, and that's it is. Uh, the Nigerian Postal Service and Nigeria's tax agency, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, they are currently in a tussle over who has the legal right to collect stamp duty for the country. And the chairman of NIPOST, Maimuna Bubaka, in a series of tweets, accused the FIRS of stealing the mandate of NIPOST, saying that there was nowhere in the FIRS Act or Stamp Duty Act that states that the FIRS can produce stamp or sell such. Now, she said the NIPOST is the only agency charged with the responsibility of producing adhesive stamps and revenue for the purchase of such stamp accrues to uh, NIPOS. But the IFRS on its part says that the collection of stamp duty is the, uh, by the NIPOS is unconstitutional. So this issue has been going on back and forth uh, since the past uh, days, and Nigerians are reacting to this. Now, let me bring this to my guests in the studio, uh, why this controversy. Dari, I know you've been following this, this development, yeah. but Nigerians are really... <laughs> when you mention the word stamp, Nigerians have always known that, uh, right. well, it was Naipos that did stamp things that day, that year, as we used to say in local parlance. But what do you make of this uh, controversy? The, the controversy is just another one hmm. of such developments <laughs> that make one wonder what is happening within this government. It is not good. And I, I, in the last uh, few months, I've been forced to remember one very common saying of my late father. He used, he used it a lot then. He would say, a house divided against itself mm. cannot stand. Cannot stand. So we see here, mm. it, this is just one government. And every day, one agency and the other parts that are at war. Talking about the issue here, stamp duty, stamp printing, collection of uh, poster tariffs. Uh, to be fair to the 
my dear, I'm at uh, night post. Mm. Maybe she went about it the wrong way because using Twitter handles to discuss serious government, uh, and you are not the man in America who popularized the use <laughs> of uh, Twitter handles to discuss matters of importance, of states, government, mm. matters of state. Mm. I will not subscribe to that. But a quick look at what is happening will show you that uh, Decree 18 of 1987 actually established an empowered NIPOST with the uh, duties of printing poster stamps. Printing poster. It clearly stated Decree 18 of 1987. Establish, establish that fact. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Decree 41 of 1992 also made it clear that the businesses of collecting postal tariffs, stamp duties, and ensuring that Nigeria gets the best of postal services are the duties of NIPOST as established by the law. Very clear and unambiguous. However, you will recall that FRS has been engine its intervention and involvement more on certain interventions by the current or uh, an immediate past national assemblies. This is a lawmaking, this is a lawmaking body with rights to take a look at those decrees and say, okay, we want to amend, we want to adjust. What we have not made clear is this. What were those amendments made by our current or immediate past national assembly to empower FRS? Are those decrees being nullified, improved upon, to take the powers of postal stamp and uh, postal tariffs away from NIPOST. Mm. These are yet to be made clear. We understand that a lot of communications have been going on between NIPOST, uh, FIRS, and the National Assembly. Right. But I think what should be done is put all the cards on the table. On the table. Let us know the amendments that have been made. So that these people, I recall, sorry, mm. that even during the uh, reign of uh, uh, the middle past postmaster general, General Adebuyi. Mm. These issues were there, but I think he was more careful mm. in handling them. Even in speaking with the president, he would tell you these are not issues that are too serious. We are all uh, government agencies. <laughs> I'll find a way around it. Maybe everybody should sit down all right. and discuss these things. All right, but Madame's approach is, is certainly For different. Me, all right. Ra and, uh, Razak, let me bring you in here. Now, when there is a confusion or there is a dispute between two uh, government agencies that are supposed to work uh, uh, complementing each other and we have this kind of disagreement, one would expect that at, at times like this, they should have gone to, gone to court to, uh, you know, get clarity on, on who has the powers to do what and, and so on. What do you say? Well, the matter has become an embarrassment uh, to the nation. The job of uh, FRS is basically to collect tax. Stamp duty is not tax. It is uh, fees you pay for services rendered. And if you look at the trend of uh, roles played by Naples all over the world, similar to it in the rest of the world, you will discover that uh, they have become business and employment generation. And that is what the government should look at. Businesses must be generated by NIPOST for FIs to be able to tax them. We led a delegation of uh, under civil society to the parliament when there was a public hearing on this matter. And we listened carefully to the argument of NIPOST, the CBN, and other agencies. It is a clear observation of power. It is clearly, it clearly shows that uh, it is a governmental dictatorship that uh, FRS is trying to impose on, uh, on NIPOST. And agencies that is responsible for defining the rules of agencies should intervene. We know and we remember clearly uh, the, in the past uh, rules played by uh, buying of stamps and uh, uh, stamp duties. Because it is electronically generated now, makes it more complex for the younger ones of today to understand that uh, is essentially the duty of NIPOS to preside over the stamp duty issue. So NIPOS and FRS don't have issue to grouse. A simple de definition of stamp duty puts the responsibility at the doorstep of a, a, a NIPOS. And the minister must also weigh in. 
You see, nepotism and tribalism must be put aside. My brother is the FRS, and I'm the minister. I must find a way around it to ensure that the FRS is pre it, it, it looks primitive, and the rest of the world will laugh at us. When the FRS is beginning to argue over the right of stamp duty, the rest of the world, look at what is happening. Employment are generated from Lipos. Google it and look at the numbers of employment generated by agency responsible for stamp duty in nearby Kenya and look at the rest of the world too. Nipost has come up with modalities to generate and create businesses for millions of Nigerians. And that is when the FRC will then be coming in to tax them. Taxing and stamp duty is a too clear entity that we don't need our intelligence to understand that FRS has nothing to do with it. So, just like what Daria have said, this is not a, a government of a PDP and, and, and APC. We operate a constitution that allows APC to form a hundred percent of APC cabinet. Yeah, Unlike but, but Razak, at this point, yeah. we wonder why NIPOS is not going to court to seek interpretation to this. It, it, the reason is what Daria has said that uh, you can a, a house that divided against itself cannot. It's not a court matter. It is a, 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 a bureaucratic matter. It's an administrative matter. Hmm. The agencies that is responsible for defining rules in government, we have it. Either the state and secretary to the federal government must be able to intervene, particularly the minister of minister for finance. The minister for finance is doing is not doing well on this matter. He she, 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 should, she should have intervened on the matter and explain word by word to FRS that uh, it should stay clear of uh, uh, stamp duty. Stamp duty is not the duty of... It's a, it, we, we live in a country that uh, anything goes. How can FRS uh, assume or think that uh, we will reverse the trend of things and put collection of stamp duty as part of their duty? They are tax collectors. This is not tax. It is a different uh, 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 payment entirely. And it is the duty of NIPOST. NIPOST, if you look at it, we took that as a civil society, before you come up to say you are, are, are pushing argument in favor of a particular agency or not, you must be able to do your research very well. And we have discovered the, the, in the last six years, up until from this article, up until Adi, we see that is there now. We have seen a lot of uh, uh, effort that has been put in place by the employment generation and creation of businesses for Nigerians. FRS cannot create business. You are only to tax business owners. IFRS is creating, uh, NAPOS is creating businesses for NAPOS and for FRS to come and tax them. So, what we are dis debating there looks uh, 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 funny, looks comical to ordinary students in the school for interpretation that uh, stamp and NAPOS are synonymous. Mm -hmm. Tax and FRS are synonymous. Mm -hmm. So, what we are saying is that. Let us put a close to this argument. Allow NIPOS to play its natural responsibility, constitutional responsibility mm. that is assigned to play. All right. FRS, look at, there are, there are millions of Nigerians that are not paying tax. Anytime I want to pay tax, it's edict to me. And they have not done anything about it. Tax is a difficult thing to pay in Nigeria. Go to any tax office, working, I've not paid my tax for 10 years. They will ask you to come and bring requirement that makes it difficult for you. So, fix tax collection. The Nigerians want to pay tax. They don't know how to go about it. Start educating people. Start orientation. Engage the civil society to assist you to do your work. Mm. I can say it boldly that uh, less than 5% of Nigerians are paying tax. And I've argued it uh, with many tax officers in Nigeria. And it's because of the pattern. Look at Lagos here. You can walk into any bank and do self-assessment and pay tax. And All right. Tax collector next year will base the assessment on the data we have submitted. Okay. Let's have our face collection and leave Naples to do what they are supposed to do. All right, Razak, uh, thank you very much. Now, Dari, the point there is, if we want to read between the lines, does it seem like there's something special that uh, maybe others are not seeing yeah. that is generating interest on, In this you know, that's, that's making agencies you, you, that you, are so... For, for you to understand that, all you need to do is look at the various claims mm -hmm. by the two by parties. both sides. Yeah. I'll start with uh, the uh, Madam uh, Mrs. Mimuna in uh, Naples. She said FRS have, has now started printing stamps mm. as an allegation, thereby denying her agency of its duties. That this is our job. We are supposed to print stamp and sell. Constitutionally mandated. Constitutionally mandated. Mm. But now this agency is not printing stamp. 
Nigerians should help us get justice. Those were our words. Then FRS responded and said, well, our claims are wrong. The National Assembly has intervened and they are doing this constitutionally too. How is what we are yet to know. But the chairman of FRS were quick to add that an iPost operates an illegal stamp duty account. He made that allegation. Okay. An allegation. He made that allegation. That tells us that something was going on on the net before. And he went ahead to threaten to say that FRS is determined to ensure that every money illegally paid anywhere else is recovered. Right. And anybody involved is punished. I, now, these are signals to the real issues. What I see here is every money accruing to the government through, like saying, FRS is just tax, maybe I may not agree, is some form of a, a, a revenue, all forms of revenue. Mm. Stamp duty is also revenue. And I think before now, there is a way the money is transferred from the collectors exactly. to FRS for onward transmission to federal exactly. That line of communication should be maintained. Mm. Whatever suspicion goes on behind the scene should be resolved. So even even beyond, is, beyond resolution, one would say if, if you suspect there is something illegal somewhere, call the FCC. Don't look into <laughs> it. Oh, I see. It, so that we do not have a case where some people <laughs> stole crude oil and stole it somewhere. Exactly. Some people discovered it and allegedly <laughs> sold it off. <laughs> All right. We, we have to leave you here now. Thank you very much, Dario Dufoko, for your time on the program. Yeah, thank, thank you. you right. Razako Lukoba, we thank you very much for your time on the program as well. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Time now to take a look at stories making the headlines in Nigeria newspapers. With me in the studio is a journalist, Dari Udufawoko. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. And via Skype is uh, public affairs analyst, Razak Ulukoba. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. All right, gentlemen, let's head straight to the papers now. And I begin with the Daily Trust. Outrageous marketers increase fuel price to 150 naira per litre. Hike will worsen inflation, expats, small businesses at receiving end manned as the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Federal government keeps silent. And to the front page of the blueprint, Katsina Matsari owns up says uh, bandits separate in nine of 34 local government areas. We are confronted with unfriendly terrain. Matawali tasks monarchs on intelligence. And to the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, uh, $79.3 billion debt stock. China not a major funding source for Nigeria, DMO. Says loans from China represent 3.94%. On the front page of the Daily Times, police uh, revolution now protesters lock horns. To the front page of the national economy now, business is optimistic as Nigeria reports highest power generation ever. Task government discos on improved distribution. And finally, on the front page of the leadership newspaper, Al-Qaeda infiltrating Northwest, U.S. alerts Nigeria. Says terror group taking advantage of pandemic, sends uh, ventilators to Nigeria today. We won't allow banditry escalate to Boko Haram, Matsuri. Presidency denies absorbing repentant sect members into military. PTF meets uh, President Muhari to announce next phase of uh, East lockdown may lift night curfew. All right, quickly, gentlemen, I'm certain you're interested in this topic on the front page of the leadership newspaper, talking about uh, Al-Qaeda's infiltration into the Northwest uh, and a lot the U.S. Uh, is given Nigeria. And I would like to start with you, Razak Ulukoba. I wonder if uh, this information comes to you as a surprise. There, are, there, there, there will be alliance between all the terrorist groups in the world. And the idea is expansion of uh, the uh, ideology uh, they are preaching. Uh, Boko Haram is the fifth or the sixth, if it kept fluctuating, between the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh deadliest group in the world. 
Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and those categories mentioned by CIA top the list. They are more deadly than uh, uh, Boko Haram. So if they are going to combine force to operate in Nigeria, that's a dangerous dimension. And that means our world theater should be, should be hot by now. Debates should, be, should go on. There should be a revision of their strategy. Already, the strategy employed by Boko Haram seems to be taking one step forward and ten steps backward. They will achieve a major success today, and by tomorrow, that success will be eroded by strikes uh, from Boko Haram again. So if ISIS, who has a peculiar style of operation, Al-Qaeda, who has a peculiar style of operation, completely different from Boko Haram, if they are coming to combine forces in Nigeria, that means we are going to have a bad day uh, ahead. It is a consolidation for the military to say that uh, they are not bringing in uh, Boko Haram back uh, into the army, the one that has repented, is a consolidation. We, are, we thought before that was what was happening, and that was what was responsible for the allegations from the lies of the governor of Bruno that there, were, there are sabotage within the army. But now that he's saying so, that means there should be more effort uh, in that direction, that who is sabotaging the effort of the army. And now is the time for the president to be more firmer in his position. Disciplinary measures should be seen to be taken against saboteurs and people who do not take a Did his statement asking uh, the service chief to perhaps begin a re be, to look into this strategy, isn't that firm enough, uh, seeing that uh, it's even coming uh, five years after, as some have said, uh, isn't that a firm statement from the president? Yeah, of course, a firm statement, but it should go further than that. Uh, what, I, what, what, what I'm saying is that... Uh, that uh, there, there were allegations from the governor of Bono that they were sabotaged, should be investigated. And it looks so. You, look, you remember the uh, son of uh, Beko Ransom Kuti, I can't remember the name, I don't see that as a description. That was uh, arrested. What, how far have they gone about the trial? He said that uh, logistically, provisions were made by their superiors to go and combat Boko Haram, knowing fully well from logistic uh, uh, calculation that uh, that provision cannot procure uh, that exercise. And to that extent, he, he started complaining and he was arrested. So such issues are heavy. There were, there were several right. videos by rank and file in the army that says that, that uh, they were denied their uh, allowances. Mora is the one that, that wins war. If allowances were denied, if uh, certain uh, monuments that uh, the army deserves were denied, for people have said that I can die for my country, that's a bad thing. And that's in the direction, I think, the president should begin to look at All our right. armies at every day. They are doing their, their best. They All right, let's bring. The, we have to bring the conversation oh. back into the studio for for Daria to react to this headline talking about uh, U.S. intelligence information intelligence information rather talking about Al Qaeda infiltrating the north. How much of a concern is this for you, looking at the fact that uh, Nigeria is still dealing with issues of uh, banditry, uh, Boko Haram kidnapping, and now we are getting information that uh, these people are infiltrating the north? Well, it, it, did, it didn't come as a surprise, and it shouldn't come as a surprise to any serious person really? concerned with what is happening in the Why north. Why shouldn't East. it be? It was about two years ago, Boko Haram a faction of Boko Haram announced that they are affiliating with ISWAP. Mm. It was publicly announced. Mm -hmm. And we all understand the, the Islamic State uh, uh, ISIS. Yeah. Now, the, 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 that affiliation formed what became known <coughs> as the Islamic State in West African province, ISWAP. Mm. Yes. On our soil, Boko Haram uh, members joined that uh, deadly uh, group. And then if you look at the style, you see, fighting terror anywhere in the world is not an easy thing. And the terror, just like uh, peacemakers find a way of working together, terrorists also find a way of aligning and working together. So with Al-Qaeda being flushed out of Syria, chased away from Lebanon, having problems in Afghanistan, they will also be looking for fertile grounds we are not only to expand, but also locate their men and resources 
and recoup what the matter Nigeria lost. was a fertile ground. It's, it, it, ground you have, it's not just Nigeria. If you look at what the US said, it's not just Nigeria. Mm. They said the West African sub region is mm. being taken over by Al Qaeda. And countries that are mentioned include Mali, Kenya, Burkina Faso, and that Western, I mean, uh, not West Nigeria mm. is also. And if you look at what we, we keep talking about bandits in the Northwest. And for months now, or almost a year, I have been saying there is no difference between what is happening in Northwest and the war going on in Northeast. It is it's a simulation in the sense that resources are needed to prosecute the war in Northeast. Bukhara needs resources to buy guns, ammunition, and all that. They also need to feed. The fighting men need to feed. So those guys, uh, cattle rustling in not west those guys doing banditry in northwest those guys doing kidnapping in northwest are only an arm of the fighting forces uh, saddled with the responsibility of generating income hmm. this should not be difficult for uh, those prosecuting our war to understand so what would you expect them to do with this information now, seeing that the president has asked for them, for them to re-strategize? You say, I'm not satisfied with re-strategizing. We've been re-strategizing for over five years. And we aren't seeing results. I think we need to change the guide. Let's have some new... You see, it is just natural that somebody who goes through, let's say, secondary school, for example, and you get to the sixth class which is the final class, and you can no longer be promoted. And you were in that class for six years, five years. It is obvious that you will lose steam, and you'll be doing the same thing the same way, and nothing new. But if you bring in a new person who wants to show that, oh, I merit this position, mm. I think there will be new experiences, new ideas, new innovations that will drive the war in a manner that the Fighting men mm. who once again become motivated, they will be challenged, they will be encouraged to take up their arms appropriately right. and confront the terror that is there until we realize the fact that we may need to change mm. the guards we have, and by that I mean the service chiefs. Let's have new people in charge, let's All have right. new ideas driving this war. Al right. Qaeda is not a child's play. Okay. And Let if we realize the danger that can be done if we allow them to uh, tarry for too long, then in, it will be now. Let's easy. get uh, Razak's uh, final words on this. How do we move from here now with this information? It's very important for uh, the president. I think for me, more changing of strategy is more important to me than changing the gas. If mm -hmm. a car is bad, you repair it. You don't take the driver responsible for the malfunctioning or, or, or the, if the journey is not uh, smooth. It's the, very, the strategy is wrong. What is the supply line of this terrorist group? The men, why are they, why, why are they recruiting them? It's the ideology. So it's intellectual for intellectual. The federal government should empower the Islamic clerics to, this, to, the, uh, the, the, to, to the radicalize ideologically and intellectually those recruits because it is not absence of guns that is leading to increase in uh, Boko Haram. It's ideology. They sell wrong ideology to them. So our Islamic clerics should come on board. Federal government should pay attention to them. What did they tell these people? Why are they ready to die for an ideology? It's very important. That's one. Then the supply of arms to Boko Haram, the supply of bullets to Boko Haram, sophisticated equipment. Are, are they getting it? That's, that's that strategy. I think the president should be talking about that. Uh, why are they all this supply? How are they getting there? And for instance, now the wing that is generating income for them, you have to call the supply. All of us know that uh, when you have groups like that, there will be a wing. Uh, if someone who is uh, prosecuting a revolution must uh, will at a point ask his people to go and generate more. Either they rob bank, they do unconventional means to raise funds. That's what they are doing in in, in, in Castina. In all those guys in San, 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 San Fara, that's what they are doing in all those areas. The president should pay attention to it. That supply line of resources should be cut. I sense that uh, people are funding them, giving them dollars. That right. has been sorted out that they, they are no longer getting it again. So if you look at the supply line, they will thin out. 
And that's the important thing to do. Buhari was right. the one who led the fight to Nijay. Uh, 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 I, 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 I have to that. interrupt you here that. now because our you. time is up. But I must thank you for your contribution on the newspaper review this morning. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being with you. Darren, thank you so much for your time on the program this morning.